Ooh, stuff is taking a turn for the weird. Okay, I just wanted to read you this uh, this actual quote. Okay. Health experts support anti-police protests. As public health advocates, we do not condemn, the, condemn these gatherings as risky for COVID-19 transmission. This should not be confused with a permissive stance on all gatherings, particularly protests against stay-home orders. Do you know what this means? Can you can you read that one more time? Okay. I'm sorry. As pu- as public health advocates, we do not condemn these gatherings as risky for COVID-19. So, health experts support anti-police protests. So okay. they're they're support so people who just said like two weeks ago, mm-hmm. no gatherings of more than 10 people yep. are saying they're in support of these gatherings of thousands of people mm-hmm. who are packed in shoulder to shoulder. Oh, yeah. Shoulder to shoulder. It's just getting real obvious. Do you see Do you see what I see with this? I, I guess what I, I would need to sort of think on this. Why, okay. why don't you just give me what you got? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Here's what the fuck is going on. Okay. And I'm serious. Here's what's happening. Spoiler alert right here. We find out about this virus. The scare tactics that are used pump the terror of this to incredible levels, mm-hmm. right? 5% death rate mm-hmm. up to a five. I mean, like that's the highest that I heard mm-hmm. up to a 5% mm-hmm. mortality rate among people who get this. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, like the numbers on that, how many million people? is 5% of the American population, 15, 16, 17 million people dead, if it was 5%. Okay. Okay. Um, This is also while they were saying that, like, if you come in contact with someone, you got it. Right. All right. So Mm -hmm. everyone is very scared, you know. All the social panic that happens, all the social distancing, all the stores that are shut down because people are not essential workers. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, all the masks, all the stuff that happened, bare shelves at the grocery store, Mm -hmm. all this stuff, uh, all this panic, all this layoff, all these people who lost their jobs, all these small businesses who, who aren't essential and are having to just close down while major grocery stores and Walmart get to stay open. Okay. This is what we saw. It was so damaging to the economy i mean it was it was it caused a it caused an art so okay a bubble economically a bubble is when there's more inflation I don't know, it's not really inflation it is kind of like an inflated um sense of the dollar mm-hmm. i guess we could say so all of this damage that happened um economic insecurity at an all-time high now just a couple weeks later there was also the statement from the CDC, or not from the CDC, who was it? Someone made a statement, uh, some higher up in the government made a statement that that doctors should mark someone as a COVID death if they have COVID when they die mm-hmm. for any reason. Mm-hmm. Okay, So if you had heart disease and died with COVID, it was marked as a COVID death. If you had a heart attack, if you had a brain aneurysm. Yeah. Cancer. Cancer. Mm-hmm. Right. Then that's when it started when people were falling down the stairs and committing suicide, marked as COVID deaths. Yeah. So you mean to tell me that these people would have died anyway right then from COVID? This is crazy. Yeah. Okay. So already those numbers were incredibly inflated. Then they said, if someone hasn't been tested, you can assume that they are infected. Okay, so now anyone who dies who hasn't been tested of COVID, who hasn't tested negative of COVID, mm-hmm. is, conser- is considered a COVID death. Really? Yeah. So this is a thing. Also, Jeez. it is a fact that if uh, someone was at a hospital with a, with a COVID diagnosis, that hospital would get uh, 17 thousand five hundred dollars i believe mm-hmm. something like that eighteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars the hospital would would get that then if they were on a ventilator they would get thirty six thousand or 30 it was 35 or 36 somewhere in there okay um so this is 
it's basically incentivizing hospitals to mark people as COVID cases, whether they are or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. man, I don't know. So anyway, it changes everything when people can be treated differently based on not having had a test. That is not how our medicinal system works. Yeah, it is. It's just not how it works. And it can't work that way. I mean, it it really is very counter to positive effects. I mean, would, would you consider medicine science, right? Yeah. Fact. I mean, like, I would consider stuff to be scientific when there's, like, fact. I'm just saying, like, in the medical field, you need facts. You have to go on facts. Yeah. Right? You can't just, like, well. Right. <laughs> we're going <laughs> to assume. Of. Right. We're going to assume <laughs> something we can't test. Yeah. Making assumptions for things you can't test is, like, astrophysics job. It is not, it's not medicine's job. Okay. That, anything that happens like that should be lab tested first yeah for a long long time but yeah no that that is it is not a way of gathering real information so we have to understand that our information is very skewed yeah okay it looked like they were going to reverse that policy uh retroactively and then we were going to get accurate numbers but then they didn't Mm -hmm. okay so the numbers were way up they dropped way down then the very next day they were back up Mm -hmm. okay now we so so at the end of the lock in we were at about 100,000 covid deaths. Mm-hmm. The quarantine ended and what was it 2 3 days later they were saying we're seeing a spike in covid cases yeah. which is nonsense, mm-hmm. nonsense because it takes mm-hmm. 10 to 14 days to show results. Yeah. Or I mean to you know to manifest yeah. in some physical way. Um yeah, you're basically symptomless up you know, up to 10 to 14 days, I guess. Um, anyway, you'd have to have symptoms within the first 24 to 48 hours for them to see a spike by then. And I don't know, maybe that's how it works. So here we are a week and a half. What is it? Two weeks? How, how long after, after the the end of the quarantine? Oh, um, the, the barber shops opened back up on the 16th and yeah, here. So, okay. But I was, I think it was like a week before that. Oh, it's, it's different in some places. Okay, fine. So anyway. Call it three weeks. Okay. So three weeks, we've had plenty of time to see new COVID cases that have matured into people dying. Um, the numbers are up by less over that three weeks than the, uh, than the three weeks before by a long shot. Okay. The three weeks before when we're all, when we've all been in our homes, Mm -hmm. staying away from everyone Mm -hmm. for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. The numbers are up? The numbers are way down. Way down. We would expect, we should expect to see a a huge jump. Right. Well, if what they're telling us is true. And the other thing about viruses, about something infectious like this, it's parabolic. The curve is parabolic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're, if you... It only takes, so it's generational. Let's say there's one person that gets here, passes it to, even if they only pass it to two people and those two pass it to four, it is very, it's a very short amount of time before everyone has just kind of bumped into everyone else Mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, This is one person may pass it to four, five, Mm -hmm. a dozen people. Yeah. One generation being that big. So it's not even I mean, it's not even doubling. It's it like the square. So 12 times 12 times 12 yeah. times 12. You only have to do that like three, four times mm-hmm. before it hits everyone in the mm-hmm. nation. Anyway, these numbers just don't match. So the COVID thing, well, it didn't really work out. As far as a narrative goes, it just didn't really work out. Okay. People were so, people were upset. People were breaking the rules. You know, mm-hmm. they were not mm-hmm. being good little lemmings. Mm-hmm. And they were going to the beach and they were, I mean, and everybody is on edge mm-hmm. and things are getting like uncontrollable. And people are starting to realize that they're being lied just, to. It's all bullshit. You, when you've yeah. got this much time to look into things and to watch Facebook and watch Twitter and all that, <laughs> yeah, you're bound seriously. to learn things you would never have heard if you were sitting at your job for 40 hours a week and spending the rest of your time doing all the chores and, totally. and all that stuff for your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of eyes were open through this. 
and there have, I mean, the, the term, the great awakening, I've heard that term so many times in the last month and I'm like, yes. Yeah. It really I've, I is. haven't heard that. That is it, mama mia. And I do think, so there's enough, I mean, there are enough people, you know what else spreads like a virus? A message. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say like the, the truth, hopefully yeah. if it's juicy the, it enough. It does. I mean, yeah. it, it, seriously though, it does like. If one person really gets the bug and is like, holy smokes, I've really been looking into this and it is scary what I'm finding. Yeah. If they, I mean, that's getting the bug, Mm -hmm. right? You're going to tell how many other people. I mean, for me, it's at least a dozen. It's at least a dozen. Yeah. Ideas can spread as fast as COVID. Even ideas about like what COVID really is and how it's being used. Totally. When using COVID didn't really work out, now we've got protests. Yeah. So all we need is the next instance of a white, you know, officer would be best, but a white person killing a black person. Mm -hmm. That's all we need. Mm -hmm. If we can just get that, we can get people riled up enough. You know, if it's unjust enough, we can get people riled up enough. Um, and I don't know if that happened organically or if that was something that was, you know, planned or, or circumstances by which, you know, there was some kind of exacerbation that, that made it more likely. I don't know. I mean, you have to entertain all these scenarios as soon as you think that there may be people in the world who see the world as their chessboard and they're just figuring out like, oh, what if I move this Mm -hmm. piece? You know, how hard would it be to move this piece Mm -hmm. in this direction? You know, and all of the dominoes that fall, you know, after that. So you've got a peaceful protest. Let's put a pile of bricks there. Let's have just a few people start spray painting stuff and Mm -hmm. leaving cans of spray paint just lying around all over the place. Mm -hmm. Let's have one person throw the first water bottle. Yeah. That starts the first tear gas. That starts the first bricks being thrown. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is so easy it is it requires so few people to start something that scale yeah if they just appeal to the weakness in others yeah and then once more people are doing it well more people are going to do it you know they say it's hardest to be the first follower so you bring in a, you know you bring somebody else you bring 3 4 people mm-hmm. now you've got the first follower who's going to be the next follower it's real easy to be the next follower into a building whose windows are already broken out Mm -hmm. and who other people are going into also leading the charge you know it's just all too easy to turn a a protest that has a point into a riot that is pointless and counterproductive okay yeah so whether the whether the event of george floyd getting killed was something that was sort of orchestrated or something that was organic actually happened mm-hmm. and they just picked it up and ran with it. Mm-hmm. I see something in common between COVID and this. Do you know what that might be? They both serve one, one purpose. It's to plunge the country into a sense of chaos. Yeah. Okay. We are in financial chaos. We are in medical chaos. And now we're in military type chaos. Yeah. We have, we're, we're really deep in it right now. We're in racial chaos. I mean, like things are bad. Mm -hmm. And then you think about the timing. Yep. And it's right before an upcoming election. Yeah. And shit always gets real weird right before an upcoming election, especially lately. Yeah. Now, I have said it many times before, I think that Trump is a narcissist. I think he does things that are buffoonish. I mean, he says very stupid things. He's not a speaker. He, his ego is completely out of control. But I'm seeing more and more that he's doing things that are actually in the interest of the people. I did not take him seriously for his first two years in the presidency. And I still don't, Mm -hmm. I still don't take the things he was doing then seriously, Mm -hmm. but,
but I'm really paying attention now. And it's looking like he's he's learned something while being in the presidency. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's good, because that really needed to happen about 60 years ago. He is still not humble. You know, I mean, I would I would really like for the president to be someone that has the kind of character that I could get behind. Mm-hmm. That would be a nice to have, mm-hmm. you know, but it's not really that much of a problem for a lot of people. All I'm really looking at now is the things that have happened lately. He has basically, he, he did something really that I want to watch closely. He put the Fed, the decision of the Fed to change or to, uh, to pump money into the economy. That is now, that now belongs to the president, whoever the president is. Okay. That's a very dangerous thing. I mean, it's potentially a very dangerous thing. I will say it would be a necessary move if he decided, if he wanted to dismantle the Fed, okay? Mm-hmm. If that's what he's doing, I am fully behind him. I mean, really. Mm-hmm. I will never condone a lot of the things that he's said. I will never condone a lot of the things that he's done. But I will allow anyone to change. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to give everyone a right, or I'm going to give, I'm going to give everyone a chance to be good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give everyone a chance to show me that they've changed. I'm not going to, I'm not going to accept every weak apology and promise for change because those mean nothing to me. Mm -hmm. But if I can see someone change, I'll get on board. Yeah. Um, Conversely, my greatest heroes, like Tony Robbins, isn't above saying something that would turn me away from him. Anyway, I, I want to go with my morals, not with my not with my previous opinion and and I'm finding now at least that I really have to study so what's the I mean like he could potentially be dismantling the fed or or he could be taking complete financial control of the country yeah okay so <laughs> we'll see and I will say the that the American people are are at a point that's not good. I mean, that he can try, he can try, but that's not going to go very far. I will burn this place to the ground. I'm serious. <laughs> Everyone will burn this place to the ground. We will burn this place to the ground. We will. You know, yeah. the the whole nation will go absolutely nuts. Yeah. This uh yeah this needs to be used for the good of the people. Because the government is out of chances right now. They really are. Nobody trusts them. Nobody trusts their media. Um, you know. Tensions are so high between the people, the citizens, and the people who are sort of right here. The upper echelon or I, what? N- no, I guess because those people are sort of here, right? What are you talking about? I'm just thinking between the people and the... Um, Law enforcement? What does Brian call them? The enforcers? Okay, sure. You know, I would call the media... The enforcer class, yeah. I I mean, like, they're not physically enforcing, but they're they're doing the bidding of of the people on the top. They're reinforcing a narrative. Yeah. Yeah. So people are... The citizens are not trusting these enforcers anymore because we know that there are... There's several puppet masters that we... We know something's up. Yeah. Um. So it's all just tensions are so high, and I think s- something's about to break. Yeah. So it's like I don't know. It puts everybody and everybody's on edge, and because everybody's been stuck inside their houses, and yeah. people are in financial ruin, and some people t- I right. heard today like there's a lot of people who didn't really recover from two thousand the two thousand eight economic collapse. You know. Sure. Some people, right? And so, some, or, peop- yeah, and some people benefited enorm- enormously. Well, yeah, um, but te- I mean, like tensions were already really high, and now with all of this, like it's a powder keg, for sure. Um, so when things break like this, uh, I don't know if I, if this is something I heard recently or something I just thought of, but if you can imagine it like fault lines, okay, mm-hmm. you've got this movement 
moving against this movement. Mm -hmm. And there's more and more and more and more pressure until everything snaps and shifts. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're at that point of resistance where there's so much pressure right now. It's really, I mean, you know, the shot heard around the world. Yeah. This big standoff and nobody was, you know, nobody, nobody was supposed to fire. One shot kicked off the civil war. Mm -hmm. Um, They were supposed to be, they were supposed to be in negotiations and then they were in war because somebody pulled the trigger. Yep. Okay. That's where we're at right now. We can have it when one of these protests turns into looting or turn, turns into a riot mm-hmm. and then turns into looting and the National Guard is around, we're at war. Yeah. With ourselves. Yeah. Okay. The biggest problem is that right now, so if you're a puppet master, okay, if you really, if you are, if you're one of the people that sees the world or America as a chessboard with pawns to be moved as you please, there's a cleave between these two plates. Mm-hmm. And uh, the plates are, right now, they're black and white. That's the, that's the place with the most tension. It is the place with the most tension because the media is pushing us away from the pressure about the servant class and the enforcer class Mm -hmm. okay the servant Mm -hmm. class you know the servant class being all of the all of us underlings yeah the the enforcer class being uh anything from you know higher ups to judicial enforcers to police officers so you you do think it's more black and white right now than like i think it's being pushed toward black and white okay yeah yeah okay right so Mm -hmm. so there's a cop it's a white cop and a black civilian so it's hard to say, you know, like uh, it could have gone either way. Yeah. It could have been civilians v. police. And I think that's a lot of the mantle that a lot of people have taken up. Um, but the narrative right now on television, on Twitter, on Facebook is black versus white. Mm-hmm. It, like all the memes that I'm seeing are either black people looting and some white person commenting something like, you know, oh, what what's the point you're trying to make now? You know, mm-hmm. or like, have you made your point yet? That kind of thing where it's like really discrediting the message of the protests mm-hmm. or you've got black people posting pictures of, of white people looting and saying, you know, next time you want to post something about black people looting, you know, right, whatever right, it right. is, right? Yeah. So it's, it's just all like, racial. They're all doing and it. And it's all, it's all this, it's all how this, you know, the injustice of this other case that happened and whatever other you know, everybody's bringing everything back. Right. Yeah. And I'm just here to say, idiots of every color, age, creed, gender yeah. are looting stores. Yeah. Idiots. Mm-hmm. People who are so short-sighted, thieves. I mean, honestly, in my personal opinion, the worst. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, the second worst. But really... There's n- there aren't a lot of people lower in my opinion than thieves. Mm-hmm. They're all out there doing it, and they're all idiots. I yeah. don't care what th- what color they are. My uh, judgment of your idiocy has nothing to do with your skin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And now, I don't know. One of my friends was talking about that this weekend is going to be a bloodbath. Why? Because I guess there's. I, it sounds like, and I ha- I don't know. I need. I've got to catch up on it again because it's been more than four hours. Yeah. Um. But it sounds like there's probably a rally in D.C. Something like that. Okay. I mean, I know that there have been, um, there have been like military police and the National Guard out there, mm-hmm. sort of roaming D.C. There was a an instant uh, an instance at the White House where like Trump went over to fucking take his, you know, his picture with a Bible on the steps of a church and there were people protesting. They got gassed. They got shot with rubber bullets to disperse this crowd so that Trump could go stand on the steps of the church for a photo. Yeah. Like it's something that he lives by. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> right. I'm serious. Like, yeah, that I can't believe he probably has third degree burns on his hand. <laughs> it's gotta be. <laughs> oh, either man. that or the book doesn't have any magical powers no and it's, i know i won't even i won't 
I can't even. <laughs> I can't even with me. I don't know what to make of everything. And we'll see how things play out. There are a lot of things that Trump has done that's, that seem to be in the interest of the people. There are some... Th- oh, he just... He re-upped the fucking Patriot Act last year. Yay. So, yeah. The Patriot Act had a chance to go bye-bye. And we would have our freedom to communicate back. And he... Uh, he signed that back into into law. So So you so you were saying that he's done a lot in the what? Something about the people? What no, were you saying? I mean there are things <laughs> there are thing yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> it, well here's here's what I'm saying. I'm kind of asking for a, an example. Like you said lately there have been several things. Some Okay. Do you have another? Yeah, so he just did a he just met to uh I guess Obama had closed off 500 square miles of fishing area like ripe fishing area where there have been where there had been dynastic family fishermen you know who like a boat is passed down to a son is passed down to a grandson to Mm -hmm. a great-grandson um fifth and sixth generation fishers out here Mm -hmm. fishermen obama closed this 500 square mile area down that's the size of delaware where at uh off the coast of maine okay okay um Canada was using the same area and then charging us a 22% tariff. Okay. Hmm. So Trump said, you know, what is that? He's, he's saying like, so we can't fish in this area anymore because our last president said so. Right. And now instead of our people having the jobs that have been in their families for as long as they can remember are gone and for the privilege we're paying a 22% tariff so that so that Canadians can catch the same fish. Hmm. Sorry, what? Yeah. So anyway, this is a this is a deal that was struck with with Obama and the administration of Canada at the time, I guess. Um so yeah, so Trump overturned that. He basically uh, you know, what they said was, you know, it's just basically a no fishing sign that needs to come down. That's really hmm. as simple as it is. Wow. So Anyway, I don't know if that really is as simple as it is. Okay. But uh, they're going to start fishing there again. So there's that. That's and, fantastic. And they're going to put um, an equal tariff on anything, any exports to Canada, which is good. Cool. Like we have been economically kind of laying, rolling over mm-hmm. for a while. And I think it's because there are financial favors that were coming back our way. But it sure isn't working for us now. It's like we buy this building and we've got a tenant in eleven hundred and fifty square foot unit that's paying a hundred and fifty dollars a month. Like that's great, guys, but the rent just went up. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sure this really benefited the last owner, but uh, he's not here, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a new sheriff in town. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so those things are good. It's that kind of stuff where I'm like, yeah, I could change my mind. Yeah. Yeah, and if he were to take down the Fed, all hail Trump. I'm serious. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, like, that would be the best thing that I've ever seen a president do in my lifetime. Yeah. Bar none. I mean, it's the biggest problem that we have in this country. It's up there. It's top five. It might be the number one. I heard today that um, a group of people spotted a um, out-of-uniform police officer as part of a riot, like a riot group throwing stuff through windows. Like, so he, he had on a police, what do they call it? Oh, when police issue. Issued. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't Gas mask. Know. And everyone was like, no, this guy is a cop. Like he's. Did they confirm that he's a cop? Everybody. People called no, no, him no. out. By name? Yeah. Somebody recognized him mm-hmm. and said, yes, he's Several a cop. Several people. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's different to have, like, police issue type stuff because civilians can get that stuff. We just don't usually. Yeah. Our gas masks are $150 gas masks. They're no joke. Ooh. No, I'm just saying. I'm just they're no joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're no, like, I know. They are they're great. I'm they're glad solid. Them. Yeah. Um, anyway, I have all the stuff that that guy had in, the, in that picture except for the boots. Legit. Mm. So, I don't know. Does it have to be a cop? But, yeah, if they confirm that that's a cop. Yeah, that's a big problem. Yeah. Um, is this a retired cop or currently a cop or what? I guess I'd have to look into it. I don't know. I heard about it on Joe Rogan. 
that well, they were just talking about how there are people just inciting all of this. I mean, bricks, right? Pallets of bricks. C- police cars just sort of conveniently left on right. the side of the road. Yeah. Yep. Just targets. Easy targets. Yeah. Making it, you know, just setting stuff up. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. There was a uh, there was a uh, police van in New York City that it looked like the cops set on fire. Several of them. How so? Because, okay, so basically the fire starts. Nobody really sees the fire start, but it starts inside the windshield. Okay? That's the Mm. first place you see fire. Then you see fire, like stuff on fire dripping down below the engine. It didn't start on the ground and work, work its way up in such a pointed manner to this spot under un, inside the windshield, right? It started mm-hmm. inside the windshield. Mm-hmm. To sort of, now, that sounds like an outlandish claim, right? But then you've got a bunch of cops walking past this van that is starting to burn, and they just look at it like no big deal. Like nobody's trying to find the extinguisher. Nobody's trying to do anything. They're all calm, cool as a cucumber. Mm. Every single one of them. Um. They back people up from the street. This is right where a protest is happening. They back people up from the street, and then the fire starts to really get going. Several explosions. I'm telling you, like three or four explosions. Jeez. There shouldn't be that much stuff in a van that can blow up. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Like, I mean, I guess a police van, you could have flashbangs or something like that okay in the back i don't know i Do mean cars blow up when they get lit on fire Eh, depends yeah under the right conditions yeah Mo- mostly yeah a, a mostly empty gas tank will explode okay yeah a full gas tank will just rage okay so but this thing was on fire like it was made of an accelerant hmm. for many many minutes hmm. uh, uh it, there shouldn't have been that much stuff to burn in this thing but we're talking minutes on end so, a raging blaze. Yeah. Anyway, explosion, explosion, explosion. Talk about something that gets everyone's attention, you know, and, and sets things off in a in a chaotic manner. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. It's all just getting too much, you know. There was a, there was a, uh, a cop car that had been decommissioned somewhere else, just sitting out in the middle of a of a an intersection mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not currently a cop car i mean there have been there have been cop cars that were in service that that have also been spray painted and had windows broken and were lit lit on fire things like that but anyway but that there was just a rash of that police vehicles burning all across the country and then it, that was done and you know it's yeah. just come on I know. we we see you yeah we know what you're doing like and you, th- we, and people you think are seeing we don't it. get it? Do you think people are seeing it? I oh, mean, like, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, people are like, yeah. No, we're yo about the, about these bricks for real. We're at the it's, we're uh, getting near the middle of that parabolic curve. Riot fodder is that what it is? Or riot sure. bait? Yeah, riot bait. Yeah, <laughs> God. That's, a, that's a solid term for it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, anyway, the parabolic curve that is the spread of information. We're near the end of it. The I, only people that are left are the people with their fingers in their mm-hmm. ears saying that everything is normal, mm-hmm. you know, and that the people above us really do have everything. You know, they've they've got our best interests at heart yeah. and Trump is the devil. Right. So I'm not going to hear anything that's uh, that's, you know, Trump pro Trump propaganda. Right? Yeah. And that's fine. So, the you know, the curve stops there. And that's fine. But like before this even going into this 70 percent of us did not trust the media Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and it's like 60 some odd percent believe that there is such thing as the deep state finally yeah it's about time we're like on the on the parabolic curve of the great awakening i think we're like yeah so like when half the people know yeah by the time half the people know it's just a couple weeks till the rest who are willing to listen will know. And when you have enough people who are on the other side that are that are speaking sense, they're saying something that actually makes sense, 
that changes some of the minds of the people. You know, that takes some fingers out of some ears. What I see happening right now is that Joe Biden is losing his fucking mind. Whoa. He is really. For real. Yeah, he is slipping. You know, I mean, to the point where, like, whoever he is, I feel bad for what's ahead of him. Like, he's really losing it. Um, that's what the Democrats have because they skipped, they passed up Bernie again. <laughs> again. I, I mean, I was, I, I was Same here. dumbfounded, babe. I, like, I was dumbfounded at that video that we watched last night. Yeah. I mean. Yep. It was rough. So if you haven't seen. That's the guy you picked. If you haven't seen Joe Biden on, what was it? The View. The View. Check it out. Just, I have never seen anything like that no. from a public official before. I've never seen anything like that from an eighth grader before. I've never seen someone go on TV and bomb that hard. I, I mean, ever, ever, ever. I mean, this is it. It was more cringeworthy than Crispin Glover on on uh, the Tonight Show. Never seen this. Oh my gosh! Or on the David Letterman show. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, rough. But this was worse. This was bad. Yeah. So And that's their guy. I that's mean, their like, guy. And that's and they're not gonna I mean, there's no going back now. They can't say, Well, we changed our mind. I think uh Bernie's gonna get back in it. I can't believe Bernie, the upstanding citizen of the group, was a little bitch and got out. He was. They said, Hey, Bernie, get out and he's like, Well I guess if that's the only thing for me to do <laughs> that's I went really Yiddish with it. You did. If it's yeah. the only thing for me to do <laughs> Then it is what I shall do. <coughs> anyway. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, he, I don't know. I, I had faith in him, but man, getting out twice. Anyone, I mean, you know that anyone can run for president? Like, just anyone? Yeah. You know how many homeless people run for president yeah, every we year? we already talked about Oh, this. my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he could have just said, no, 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 I don't need to, I don't need to go with you. I'm going to go on my own ticket. Absolutely, he could have gone like that. <sighs> There's, babe, there's just such a this or that right now. It's going to break, I think. I hope it breaks. I think it something's going to break. I mean, but I think something's going to break. The good thing is right now, <sighs> the people are so aware. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we are definitely at a point where um, nothing unites enemies like a bigger badass enemy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Blacks and whites can be at each other's throats and whatever, but when the government turns on us, I think we unite. Yeah. I'm already finding myself, like, ready to team up with people that I really don't like all that much in, yeah. in normal life because we got a big, we got bigger fish to fry. We got a bigger problem on our hands, and we can put this shit aside for now. We'll deal with it later. I saw something today <clears throat> on Facebook, interestingly enough. Um, that this big push to do like a, I don't know, two weeks without watching the, like without watching the news or something like that. Like, I think honestly, one of the biggest problems with all of this is how much the media controls the facts right. and the information, right. like our government. So that, and that's sort of, sort of what I'm saying is Anytime like, you put something we, in air the quotes, citizens you... are here, the government is here. The media and the police, you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, they're just they're... they they mediate between us. Yeah, they they're the they're the gatekeepers of right. information. Right. And like, yeah. So so now we're so now people are fighting the you know police, and at least they're I I don't know they're fighting, but but also police officers are, I think a lot of districts are. I don't know. Police. Sure, districts. Whatever. They're changing their rules. You know, they're, they are becoming more aware. A lot of cops are just quitting because, like, the shit. Because they don't, maybe because they don't want to be on the wrong side anymore. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, like, it's, I don't, I really don't know. Anyway, I feel they're like scared. there's changing. I mean, yeah, maybe because they're happening. scared. But the, the people who, the people who should be scared are probably not on that side. I mean, the people who are more likely scared mm -hmm. are not the people who are in it for the control and the power that it brings. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, there could be a point where 
everybody just leaves. Mm -hmm. They're like, fuck this job. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. what I'm saying is the, the better cops are going to be the first ones to do that. Mm -hmm. The worst cops are, are going to be the hangers on. Right. The ones who like, as long as I can get a paycheck. Yeah. I can push people around. All right. Sign yeah. me up. You know what I mean? That's those are those are going to be the last people to quit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if this goes south enough, they may all quit. Yeah. There's a big problem with that. Anarchy is not for everyone. You know, we see what's happened in Venezuela and they are in a state of anarchy. Mm -hmm. So if we want America to be like Venezuela, we need to start victimizing innocent cops because they're cops rather mm -hmm. than rather than going on a case by case basis. How does this person, how does this precinct treat us? Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of bylaws, what kind of enforcement of of uh, excessive force? You know, what kind of enforcement against officers that use excessive force? Yeah. What kind of paid leave right. are people getting yeah. for committing murder on film? Mm -hmm. You know, those are the things we need to look at. There are some precincts that the whole precinct needs, needs to come down. Um, Minneapolis, from what I hear, was very corrupt. Really? Sounds like it. Hmm. I mean, I don't know for sure. I mean, like, I haven't really searched the other side of the story like I really like to do before saying something like that. So anyway... Take it with that kind of grain of salt. I have not searched the other side. You should definitely search it before, you know, siding with me on this thing that I know half the story of. Um, but there are precincts. I mean, like NYPD, those fucking thugs really? are getting a. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's rough. It's hmm. really rough. Um, yeah, they. Uh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see that that clip but i did see a clip where they 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 were marching down a street and this girl little girl not like a little girl but she was like i, I don't know probably 20 ish mm -hmm. and under 100 pounds mm -hmm. um was standing where these cops were like next to where the cops were walking this one cop one-handed really leans into it and just shoves her feet off the ground she hits her back and then hits her head on the concrete. <sighs> and then they just keep marching. Wow. Yeah. And it's stuff like that all the time. And they need to go. Fuck. I can't post this. I can't even fucking post this. Yeah. Because it's inciting violence. And I'm like, fucking, it's a, it's a reply of violence. Yeah. To violence, uh, you know, to violence that's happening all the time that's being fucking ignored. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, no one can even call for violence or it's a hate crime. You know, it's hate speech. You can get, we could get banned from YouTube for me saying that. But yet cops can walk down the street, do violence mm -hmm. on camera and nothing happens. Yeah. No accountability. What the fuck There's kind no of place are we? We're living in banana land. Yeah. This is crazy town. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what has happened. Yeah, no, I mean, all kinds of accountability for people like us who have a YouTube channel Yeah. with 10,000 plus subscribers. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, probably they need to get shut down. But, like, ugh. Well, and the the people have to live by such strict laws and we have to, you know, pay fees and fines and taxes and follow this nonsense rule and this bullshit rule and yeah. and we're just expected to follow it and, and ever the... restricting laws oh yeah while the while the ruling class mm -hmm. and the enforcer class gets ever more unrestricted laws and they're fucking it up i mean like the people who are in control are fucking corrupt yeah i mean a lot of them yeah a lot of them there are very few that don't fit that category. Yeah. Very few. Anyway, we should wrap up. I just, I get so heated over this stuff. Life is so heavy lately. And so yesterday, yeah. I, honest to goodness, I just put it down. I was like, I'm not thinking about this stuff. Call, you know, called my mom and we talked for a couple hours. It was mm -hmm. great. And I did some construction and I didn't get on Twitter and I didn't see Facebook and it was awesome. Yeah, I wanted to say, I wanted to tell you today that I really appreciate you recognizing that 
I don't know. I think my poor heart can't take it sometimes, you know. So that's why I, I don't know. I like the, the shows right. that I watch over and over again because it kind of is. I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's a escape. lot. It's an escape from all the. And it's just and scary it's that's the smallest right escape, you know. But yeah. it allows me to sort of get so. But I it really shifts your mindset totally. back to non scared and non you totally. know on edge. Because it's so. Yeah. Here's the thing about this right now. There's a very fine line between knowing enough to be prepared Mm -hmm. and knowing so much that you live in dread. Yeah. So I am not, like I've told you before, I'm not going to sit around and worry that things are going to happen. I'm going to prepare for things to happen Mm -hmm. and then I'll be ready if they do. And that's it. And that's, and seriously, if you want to rid your life of worry and dread, get prepared. Mm -hmm. There it is. You know, do the best you can, and then, you know, the rest is, uh, it's a roll of the dice, or it's up to God, or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, the the chips will fall where they may, but you have a chance right now to, uh, to get yourself prepared. So, quell your fears, buy a gun, get a, you know, get your, get a door alarm. They're so cheap. Go to the Harbor next... Freight and get two door alarms for $3. The next conversation I have with someone about, like... Do you really need a gun? I know you want a gun. I can't imagine having that. I can't ha- imagine having that conversation again. I'm not having that. Con- <laughs> I mean, like, I. Do you think it's ever going to happen? I'll have the conversation. Yeah. Now I did it's the like the other night. Are you yeah, serious? Yeah. Really? Yes. That's very surprising. That's yeah. like. That's like right in the middle of the of the store. You know, stores being empty. Somebody be, being like, "Do you really need toilet paper?" Babe, no, I was like, I just, <laughs> I just said like, I, I, I cannot imagine not having a gun right now. Being unarmed? Being completely unarmed with what I know, with what I know about our government and the, just the, just, just the fucking way the world is going right now. I mean, like, I cannot imagine still being of the mindset of like, you don't need guns. Guns are this and this and this. Yeah, and I'm I like. I figured we would stop hearing that by now. What? Yeah. Right. There's, I don't know. Yeah, when I bought one of my guns, I don't know if I've talked about this on here. When I bought one of my guns, I had a friend ask me, are you okay? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, great. So great, yeah. Why? I just got an awesome gun. So, yeah, I'm great. Wait. Oh, you mean, yeah, fine. Yeah. (laughs) It's so weird. Yeah. You know, but anyway, but now, you know, nobody's asking now. You know, now they know I'm okay. (laughs) Now they're the ones who aren't okay. You know, so anyway. I, yo, no, I'm not and just going to be a turtle without a shell. I'm I not going to do that. Never mind. <laughs> All right. It's just like, it's it's a bananas conversation for me. You know what I mean? It's, I can't imagine, I, I just can't believe that there are still people who are, who know what's going on. Right. You really know what's going on and who still... Who think you're better off without protection. Who think they're going to, like... If someone comes into your house... Ah, never mind. This is great. This is great I'm sorry. Podcasting. No, this is just a... This is a whole other conversation that we're about to get into. And we were about to wrap right. it up, so... Okay. Anyway. Yeah, we always tease everyone. This like, is my, all right. Let's my wrap stance up. Is, my stance is I would rather have a weapon right now. I would yeah. rather have a way to protect myself. Same here. All right. That's it. The we're end. out of here. Oh, um, sorry. Hey, best of luck, everyone <laughs> out there. <laughs> Stay safe. We're doing all right. I think we're doing all right. So. You and I? No, I think the country's doing all right. <laughs> I think I love that. I love the uh, that great awakening. Yeah. Yep, keep it going. Um, anyone who hasn't seen the Candace Owens video, um, you got to see it. It's it's really, it's something that needs to be said. It's something that, like, if any white person said it, they would be called racist. Their message would be shut down entirely, but it is facts-based. And uh, she has a very, and I mean, it's also her opinion, um, but she has a very strong reason for for holding her opinion Mm -hmm. and it's based i mean it really is based in facts and it calls it's it does two great things it calls out racism in the black community and it's and it also gives a message of hope like we can do better than this there are so many there are so many better examples 
you should go watch it. Mm -hmm. I'll put the link in the mm -hmm. comments. It needs to be spread, you know. Yeah. Love you all. Um, stay safe out there. Think of solutions and uh, try to try to act on them. Something peaceful, ideally. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all. We're going to cut it right there. Thanks for joining us in Banana Land. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, share it. Do all the do all the things that you wish comment. Do. I mean, like, comment. I really want to know, like, yeah, are people listening to the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you've gotten this, if you far, made it this far, if you made it this far, type applesauce into the comments. Good. Yeah, applesauce.